well hello there welcome back to my channel guys yes so as you can see from this video see these two bibles that i have here in my hands they are the new world translation this is the one that they are currently using now and i believe this one would be the previous one that they would have had using before in one of my videos that i had done on the jehovah's witness church I believe that's the uh, I have in the in in my playlist section dedicated for Jehovah's Witness. I'm not sure which video I would have stated it, but I'm almost certain that I would have mentioned before that I'm going to do a video on the Jehovah's Witness Bible, right? Because I I, I did a video where I looked at their 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 pamphlets, a few of their pamphlets and their books in order for you to see. The, the intention of the Jehovah's Witness organization and just how far they will go to manipulate and to control people. And so in this video, which is basically for now, is the final video that I'll be doing on them because I don't plan to do an apologetics dedicated to the Seventh-day um, Jehovah's Witness Church. Unlike with the Seventh-day Adventists, because I was a Seventh-day Adventist and I naturally by default have more intel on them, you realize because of that I more do videos on the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But for other calls, like the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I don't have as much details. So as a result of that, I'm not going to take away the work of the ex-cultists who were a part of the cause and have now became activists. I'm leaving them to deal with their former cult, right? Which is Jehovah's Witness, Mormons. They have been ex-persons who leave it. And I'm doing apologetics on it. I'm not going to try and take away their work from them because I can't do it better than them. I can't do it better than them because I wasn't in it. So I only do a few videos that can be useful, right? When it comes to the other cult groups that I've actually looked at. But I'm not focusing on no one in entirety as I would have done with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Nonetheless... I'm certain that in this video, you will find it very educational and very informative, right? And by the end of this video, you'll realize just how much we as Christians have to be alert when it comes to um, the word of God and so forth. Because if we are not, then these cult groups and cultists will come under our nose and basically do all kind of things whilst we are there unaware right so with that being said let us have a look at them yes now as you can see here are the two bibles that i had showing if you notice this black one is very old this version is their 1984 version and it was used by a farmer it was used by a farmer jehovah's witness pardon but the name that is there right this person had actually left their bible at a place where i used to work and man did i de i definitely took it and make use of it as you can see the, the, the when it was um trans um revised rather it was revised 1984 but this is what is funny rendered from the original languages by the new world translation committee so what they say about their bible is that it is rendered from the original languages so they, they they took it from the original languages right so this is what they have to say about their bible as said before these are the um the most two the two most recent ram revised versions this one is 2013 revised from 2013 right now you can see that this is brand new. This is a brand new Bible that I happen to got um got from from them. I've never it, it has never been used as you can see as opposed to this one, right? So with that being said, guys, we are going to be doing some comparisons, but I'll mostly be using this, seeing that this is their new position. This is what we will be mostly using, but I'll show you a few changes that has actually occurred from this to this. And I'm going to elaborate on why the change was actually made. Now, Walter Martin from the book Kingdom of the Cult that I've been using quite a few times in my 
videos on apologetics to cults. He has a, quite a few things to say where the Jehovah's Witness translation is concerned. But before we look at what Walter Martin has to say, we are going to look at a few verses from the New World Translation. Now, as I would have pointed out in the few videos that I've did before them already that you can find on my playlist section on the Jehovah's Witness cult, I would have pointed out that they don't believe in the Trinity. They believe that Jesus was a created being. He was created. He had pre-existed pre his time here on earth. However, he was created in time past before the earth was created. And through him, God was able to create all other things as how they put it. Right? So Jesus is a created being. Created before his, he was even born on earth. Right? And they say that the Holy Spirit is not an actual literal person. He's not a third person literal person the holy spirit is a force and it rather this is jehovah's witness stance you're going to see how they actually support it with their version of the bible or their translation of the bible and i'm going to do some comparisons with other actual legitimate bible bible that are more what i would say authentic than than theirs and we're we just going to compare them so with that being said, let us have the first look. And what we are going to look at first is the book of John. John 1 verse 1. Yes, so here we are. John 1 1. It reads thus from the New World Translation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Now we are going to stop there. We are not going to... We're not going to go any further into this, but just pause for a minute here on John 1.1. 1, 1. Now, if you do a comparison and you look at every other translation there is, you won't see two things from this verse. What are the two things that you won't see? You won't see the God, as I, I, I mentioned in the last word of the verse, in a common G. You would see it in capital G. Right? Every other translation that you see, it will appear in a capital G. Now, what also you will not see is the word ah. You will not see the word ah in it. Right? Now, persons might say to themselves, what's the big idea, Kisma? You're, 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 you're making a big deal out of nothing. But I would say that this is in fact a big deal. Why? The text says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Which word is that talking about? Verse 14 would actually answer to you who the word is referring to. Now, it says, So the word became flesh and resided among us, and we had a view of his glory, a glory such as things to, so a glory such as belongs to an only begotten son from a father. And he was full of divine favor and truth. So we understand that the word became flesh. So that means, who became flesh? Jesus. So this means that in verse 1, the word referring to here, is actually Jesus. So let's go at it again. In the beginning was the word Jesus. And the word was with God. That's the father. And the word was a God. So in other words. This is saying that Jesus was a God. Right? Jesus was a God. This is not the same as saying that Jesus was God. It's two entirely different things. And two entirely different meanings. Right? The latter... Is actually telling you that Jesus is God. The word was God. The farmer from their translation the word was a God. Is showing you that Jesus is a smaller God. A created God. Because the word come and Gina, As the Bible tells us there, there be many gods. But only one God. So those other gods are created gods. So if Jesus is a God or was a God. That means that he's a created God. A God that came after the father. This is how significant this verse is. So according to them, when you look at the early part of this Bible, it said that this is trans rendered from the original language. Are you going to say that, is it that they're saying that Christians, the, the other translations um, in, the, in the world, all other translations was not translated from the original language because if it was, they would see that there's an A, uh, 
in 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 John one one and they would see that the the, um, the capital G for the uh, 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 that follows after Agad. It should not have been a capital G, but rather a common. Since this comes from the original language uh, uh, and no other translation has Agad in it, then we can only assume that every other translation in the world were not taken from the original language, thereby giving them the error in putting capital G for the, for the word was God there and not putting in the A in it. This is what uh, we, we can basically um, um, conclude, you know, by, by just this admission that it's, it was taken, rendered from the original language. And this is how they actually render John 1.1. 1, 1. This is how they actually render John 1.1. 1, John 1, 1. I'm going to come back to this verse soon. Just uh, uh, um, w w when, I, when I get into what Walter Martin has to say, I'm going to come back to John 1.1. 1, 1. But just let us just have some further um look look here in other verses now john 14 verse 15 onwards this is what they say about the holy spirit if you love me you will observe my commandments and i will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever the spirit of truth that's the other helper the spirit of truth which the world cannot receive because it, that is the world, neither sees it nor knows it. That is the Holy Spirit now. That is being referred to as an it, right? And that is referred to as another helper, right? Now, a helper is an actual person. This is where it doesn't make any sense now. Because a helper is basically a person, someone who aids you. In some things, so how can you say a helper is an it? That doesn't make any sense. But when you understand that the Jehovah's Witness Church believe that the Holy Spirit is a force and not a literal person, it, then you can actually understand why they render this verse as such. Now, what does other more reputable translation has to say? If you look at every other translation there is, all of them is unanimous in one thing and that is in how they render verse 16 and verse 17 using the words him right the spirit of truth which the world cannot see because it sees it it sees him not neither knows him right this is what most translation render the verses but here you see the Jehovah's Witness Bible it renders it at it all for the very reason because they, they, they won't accept the biblical truth of the Trinity. And so they will move mountains. They'll blow up a building. Right? Just to try to disprove this. And this goes to show you how far they will go. Their desperation is apparent by just making this Bible. By just making this Bible show so desperately they, 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 they want to reject the truth of the Trinity. Now... We are going to look at a few more verses, right, before we actually move on. This is where it gets interesting now. The book of Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 13 onwards. He rescued us from the, from the authority of the darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. This is the father now referred to as he. Right, rescued us and translated us into the kingdom of his beloved son, which is Jesus. By means of whom, that is Jesus, we have we have our release by ransom, the forgiveness of our sins. He, that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Because by means of him, that is Jesus, all other, note the key word now, all other, Things were created in heavens and on earth, the things visible and the things invisible, whether they are thrones or lordship or governments or authorities. All other things have been created through him. And he is before all other things, and by him all other things were made to exist. Why are you stressing the word all other kismar? You are going to see why. Let's have a look at this translation and you will see how the 1984 revised version actually put those same words and you're going to see the clear deception here yes here comes the other translation now he delivered us from the authority of the darkness 
transferred of the darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his of, of the son of his love by means of whom we have our release by ransom the forgiveness of our sins he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation because by means of him all other things were created in the heavens and upon the earth things visible and things invisible no matter whether they are thrones or lordship our governments, our authority, all other. You'll notice something very significant here. Other is put in bracket. Other right here is also put in bracket. And you notice other right here in verse 17 is put in bracket. Whereas with this translation, I'm going to pull up the, the um this translation now. This more um revised one, 2013. That is 20, 1984. This is 2013. You'll notice in the 2013 translation here that other is not in brackets. You'll notice that other, see it? Other is not in bracket. Why is this important? There's a difference between a paraphrase and an actual Bible. I have translated from the Amplified Version more than once. And the Amplified Version is actually a paraphrase. So whenever someone is paraphrasing something, they will put it in bracket so that you know that this is not what actually um, was taken from whether it be the Hebrew, the text itself, but rather how they interpret the text. So when, whenever something is put in bracket, you know that this is how the author interprets what is actually being said. And why that is important now? It is because the reader needs to have an opportunity to disagree. The reader, it is fair and right for the reader to get the opportunity to disagree with how the writer actually um, interprets the word. Because after all, it's okay for you to disagree with me, the person who is actually doing this video. It is okay for you to disagree with anyone when it comes to matters of theology. But what, you, what is not okay for you to do is to disagree with the word of God. That is not something for you to do to disagree. Because disagreeing with the word of God is disagreeing with God. But you can disagree with man. And this is very important. When I was a Seventh-day Adventist, I was led to believe that the writings of Ellen G. White are inspired. And as a result of that, I, I absorb everything without disagreeing. Why? Because they are God's words. As opposed to when you're reading from, a, 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 you're reading from let's say, a commentary. You can always disagree with how, how commenters put things. I have used commentaries before. I've used John Calvin. I've used... I've used J. Gills and I've used other, other commenters before Matthew Henry and I've disagreed with each of them before. This is why sometimes I use, I always look at different com commentators and see what they say because all commentators won't always agree or they, they will give different views and so forth. And it's okay for you to disagree because we are all men and fallible, we can err. This is why it's good to, to use more than one commentator when, when you're looking at any point. This is why it's good to hear from different persons here, different views. So when you're translating the Bible and you're paraphrasing, you need to put in brackets so that the writer knows that this is not God's word so you can disagree with it. So because in this version now, they put the other in bracket because clearly when you look at other translation, you won't see other there. You won't see other in it. So they put it in bracket in this one, right? To, so that you can know that the other is not in the actual text. This is just their interpretation of it. But I think somewhere down the line, they realize that this is problematic because if the, 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 if the congregation knows that this is not God's word and this is how they interpret it, therein lies the possibility that they may disagree with it and realize that no, something is wrong with this verse because if the text is saying that all things were created by jesus jesus himself cannot be created for this text to be true he cannot be if you're going to say that all things were created by jesus it means that every created thing was the work of christ if christ is created then it becomes false that means that not every created thing was created by christ because there is one created thing that was not created by christ and that is christ himself that is what it would mean logically 
the minute you say that all things cre were created by him, Jesus himself cannot be created for the statement to be true. And Jehovah's Witness realize this problem and as a result, they make a more modern translation and, and now remove the bracket so that, the, the, that the, 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 the congregation cannot know that this is not actually God's word and that God did not say that all other things was created by Jesus but rather God did say that all things that were created were created by him. They don't want the congregation to know this so they make a more modern translation 2013 this goes to show how dishonest the Jehovah's Witness organization actually is. And this is how significant this verse, this verse actually is. This is how significant. This is not like with the amplified version where it puts things in brackets so that you can know that this is how they are interpreting it. And you are free to disagree with their, their, their interpretation. You want to see God's word and derive for yourself. What God's word is actually saying and not a person actually reconstructing it as the Jehovah's Witness Church has actually done. Because they realize that the scriptures is actually showing you something that Jesus is not a created being. And they, go, uh, and, and they, and they, dis they would destroy a building to try to disprove this. So much so that they make their own version of the Bible that they, uh, 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 that they could pervert in order to lead persons astray. We're going to look at we, we we're going to look at just about let's see you now what else can we look at from this um new world translation the holy spirit you'll realize that when it comes to the holy spirit as i would have shown before in um in john chapter 14 and i'm going to show you again in john chapter 14 that they put the holy spirit in in common letters right because they believe that the spirit is a force right and the holy spirit is placed in common letters if you look at it right here, let's see, verse 16. I will, I will pray the Father, the Spirit of truth, right? Verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit. Notice the Spirit is in, uh, is in common letters. And you're going to see what the, um, the Jehovah's Witness organization actually put in capital letters. Guys, you'll be amazed when you see what they put in capital letters. Therefore... James, James 4 verse 7 Therefore subject yourselves to God but oppose the devil and he will flee from you. The Jehovah's Witness organization put D, the devil, in capital letter and you'll realize that in every single other translation they translate the word devil in common letter but the Jehovah's Witness organization put the devil, Satan and put it in actual cap capital letters. This goes to show you how much respect they actually have for Satan. <laughs> I, I want to say more on, on this subject. But I'm trying to keep this verse. Keep this um, video rather short. Because I could go on and on. In showing you the Jehovah's Witness translation. How perverted it actually is. It rivals only Seventh-day Adventists. It rivals only Seventh-day Adventist clear word Bible. Yes, it rivals Seventh-day Adventist Clear Word Bible. And I did a video on this, their Clear Word, which I'm going to pin in the comment section. All of you who know Seventh-day Adventist and Jehovah's Witness history, you, can, you, you would basically know that they are, they, they are, you can call them cousins or sisters. They're basically one and the same in, 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 in many respects. Right, guys? They're technically one and the same. The word devil there that you saw, all of the renderings of, of the devil when speaking of Satan, you'll realize from the New World Translation, you will always find it in capital letters. Right? Whereas with every other translation, you will see it in common letters. <laughs> they are just simply amazing. They are simply amazing. Yes, so guys, regrettably, I'm going to have to end this video now. I would want to go through so much more because in order to really understand the Jehovah's Witness Church, it's actually good to know, um, to understand their own Bible. And I should let you all know that when it comes to their Bible, you can use their very own Bible to actually um, expose the, their, their lies and their false doctrine. If you can get your hands on both this, 
and this one. You can stand a good chance in actually converting a, 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 a Jehovah's Witness from out of the cult into Christ. Right? Because then they will actually see that there is an intent when you do a simple comparison between this and this. Because why they keep on revising their translation is because whenever they find discrepancies with one, then they try to make a newer one to correct those discrepancies. But you see, their beliefs is so twisted, it is sometimes virtually hard to actually rectify everything. Because if they are going to modify everything, then they can't change everything in the Bible. And they have to be careful how much they change. Because it will be clear from anyone if they see that even everything is changing. Then it would mean that they have an entirely different, a totally different book they are using. So they try not to change every single thing unless there is really no choice. Because this is how Satan operates, you know. He has to do his thing in a subtle manner. He has to mix truth with error. And so they can't change every single thing and make the whole thing an error. It needs to have some things identifiable that is true. So this is the struggle that they, are, they actually have in on. This is the, um, the, the, the struggle with the devil himself. In order to completely trick people, he cannot change every single thing. You have to change just a little where you cannot notice. I'm going to prove something here to you just by using my go-to verse. Whenever I'm dealing with a Jehovah's Witness and using their Bible, if you want to disprove the Trinity, I always go to one part of the Bible to do so. Right? And that is Isaiah chapter 14. I'm going to show you from Isaiah 14 something remarkable here that whenever you're dealing with a Jehovah's Witness and you want to show them that the Trinity is actually true, and by using their own Bible, since they're likely to reject yours, you can use their Bible to actually uh, um, prove a point to them. Isaiah chapter 14. If you look at the beginning verse, Hear this, O house of Jacob, you who calls yourself by the name of Israel. You can identify already that it is God who is speaking here. It is Jehovah who is actually speaking here. When you read the entire verses come down. But something remarkable is, go, uh, is going to be pointed out here that you can actually use against them. Starting from verse 12. Listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, whom I have called. I am the first. I am the same one. I am the first. I am also the last. Those are statements of deity. Saying you are the first and the last, those are statements of deity. You find Jesus saying the very same thing in Revelation chapter 1. Right? Ironically, this is something being said in, 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 in Isaiah 48. It continues, My own hand laid the foundations of the earth, and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. This is God speaking here, Jehovah. Gather together, all of you will listen. Who among them has announced these things? Jehovah has loved him. He will carry out his delight against Babylon. So this is basically speaking now in third person. Right? So Jehovah is speaking here, you know, God, you know. So you'll notice first person language in verse 12. I have called whom I have called. I am the, the same one. I am the first. I am also the last. This is first person language. Jehovah saying, to, um, saying that he's the first and the last. Jehovah is also saying that, that all of you gather together, all of you, and listen. Whom among them has announced these things? Who among them has announced these things? Jehovah has loved him. He will carry out his delight against Babylon. That is Jehovah, I know. So Jehovah was speaking in first person language in verse 12, saying he's the first and the last. The same Jehovah is now speaking in third person language and saying that he will love him. He who? Jehovah will love him. So it has to be that he's speaking about someone else. The minute he switched to third person language and saying that he will love him. He, Jehovah, will love him. Who is Jehovah talking about and saying that he, Jehovah, will love him? If that's not clear, let's continue further. I myself have spoken, first person language now, and I have called him, I have brought him, and his way will be successful. Come near to me and hear this from the very start. I, first person language, have, have not spoken in secret. From the time it happened, I was there. And now the sovereign Lord 
hath sent me and his spirit. So now the, the person who was speaking initially, you know, in the first part, which, is, which we identified that is Jehovah, was saying that I have not spoken in secret. From the time it happened, I was there. And now the sovereign Lord Jehovah has sent me. So Jehovah, who called himself the first and the last, which you would have read earlier, who spoke in, 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 in speaking in first language, is now saying that Jehovah had sent me and his spirit. So Jehovah is saying that Jehovah has sent him. If this isn't clear, this is actually proving to you that Jesus is Jehovah just as much as oh, the Father is Jehovah. Because what they have to say, you know, you know, the Jehovah's Witness, you know, is that only the Father is Jehovah. Only the Father is God. But from what we read contextually in Isaiah 48, it is actually showing us that Jesus is Jehovah. It is showing you that Jesus is God. It is showing you that Jesus is the first and he is also the last. Jesus in saying that he is the first, meaning that there is none before him. He exists at the same point in time with the Father. He is just as eternal as much as the Father is eternal. Now you notice that they put the Spirit here in, in common letter, right? But we're not even going to talk about that because we don't speak already that they put the Holy Spirit in common letter because they believe that the Spirit is a force, not a literal person. So this is telling you that Jesus was sent by the Father and his Spirit. And you read in Matthew, right? When it am um, in the baptism, both the Father... The Father spoke in heaven while Jesus was baptizing and the Holy Spirit came down like a dove. At one point it tells you that the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. It shows you that the work of Jesus coming here was as a result of being sent both by the Father and his Spirit. And it's the same thing being shown here where Jehovah is telling you that he was sent by Jehovah, the sovereign Lord, and his Spirit. So Isaiah chapter 48 actually shows you from their very own Bible, it is actually showing you that Jesus is God. Right? It is actually showing you here that Jesus is God. And one, yes, now this is the part that they actually miss. When Jesus was actually in the room with his disciples and Thomas was there, you know, doubting Thomas who didn't believe. When you heard that Jesus was resurrecting. And after Thomas had um, placed his finger in his, in, his, in his hands. So in his side rather. It says that next he said to Thomas. Put your finger here and see my hands. And take your hand. And stick it into my side. And stop doubting. But believe. In answer Thomas said to him. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. This is what, um, um, what, what Thomas response to Christ was my Lord and my God he called him Lord and he called him his God not come on G and it's come straight from their own Bible so you see if you know the verses if you study them the, the Bible and you know which particular verse to go to you can use their very own Bible to actually show them the truth about Christ because while they try to change things Unfortunately, they were not able to capture all the instances that exposes their false doctrine. So once you know these verses, you can perhaps use their very own Bible and convert them. I will not say more on this, but I will most certainly have a part two on this one.